So let's do one more example. Uh, let's do a slightly more challenging problem. And we'll let the f of x be equal to x divided by x minus 1. Okay? And the nice thing is we're going to follow the exact same strategy that we used on the last one. So first of all, let's define our f of x plus delta x, right? So in this case, we're going to get x plus delta x over x plus delta x minus 1. Because we simply replace everywhere that there is an x in the function with the x plus delta x. And then let's also define the f of x again, which is simple because the problem gave it to us. x over x minus 1. Great. And now we will write down the, the definition of the derivative, right? So the definition of a derivative is the limit as delta x goes to 0 of this guy. So he was given as x plus delta x over x plus delta x minus 1. Minus 1. And then we subtract f of x, right, according to this formula right here. So when we subtract it, we get x minus x minus 1. And then finally, don't forget, all of it divided by delta x. So this one's more challenging because we have fractions here. And we're going to actually have to find the common denominator to subtract those two functions, right? So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the first one by x minus 1 divided by x minus 1. So just multiply the first guy by 1, a well-chosen 1. And same thing on this guy, but we're going to choose x plus delta x minus 1. Just algebra, nothing, nothing too hard. x minus 1. And when you multiply these functions, what we can do is we have to multiply them straight across. So this first guy, I'm going to use red to show that I'm working on this term. This guy is going to become, if we multiply it out, we get x squared plus x delta x minus x minus delta x all over. And let's leave these separated because it might help out later. Um, x plus delta x minus 1. All right? We'll do the same thing for the other term here. So we're going to now subtract x distributed across these guys. So x squared plus x delta x minus x all over. And again, I'll leave these separated. So you can see now these two guys have, oh, let's not forget, just to be complete limit as delta x goes to 0, all divided by delta x, OK? But these two guys here, they've got the same common denominator. So now we can actually subtract the numerators by each other. So this guy and this guy, OK? So the result of subtracting these numerators, we get x squared minus x squared. So this guy can cancel with this guy. So that's great. Once again, we're seeing nice cancellation. So we're on the right track. This guy can cancel with this guy because of the negative again. Negative right here. Then we get minus x minus minus x. So those guys cancel. And so what we're left with now is we have a just the negative delta x on top. So if I rewrite this, so now everything's been combined. We get delta x all over x minus 1 times x plus delta x minus 1. Okay? And again, there is all of this is divided by delta x. Now remember, when it's just divided by delta x on the bottom like this, we can also rewrite this as, if we cross this out, as times 
1 over delta x. And I think this is a better way to look at it because what's going to happen here is now we go through and we actually see we get a delta x on top, delta x on bottom. Those cancel to 1. So we have 1 left over. And now we can rewrite all this again as the limit as delta x goes to 0 of 1 over x minus 1 over x plus delta x minus 1. And so by getting rid of this delta x on bottom, we can actually take the limit now because the limit of this new function won't go to infinity because anything you divide by 0 goes to infinity. So what gets left over after we take the limit? Well, this guy goes to 0 per this limit. And what we're left with now is 1 over x minus 1, x minus 1. And so since there are no more delta x's left, we have our solution. So, and this can be simplified slightly to 1 over x minus 1 squared. And that's your derivative of this function here. So this is your f prime of x. Great, thank you.